we are going to talk about DNA replication in this lesson. And as we had learnt till now that DNA is the genetic material, then we have our understanding of why DNA replication is semi-conservative, what is uh, the meaning of being semi-conservative mode of replication, how it was proven. And now we are going to see that how DNA replication actually takes place. It is a super guided enzymatic activity. Okay? There are a series of enzymes which are involved and as you know enzymes are known for their specificity and they are very very particular. So this DNA replication we are going to understand the process by understanding the functioning of each enzyme. Okay? One by one we are going to see which all enzymes are involved and as we see their functions we are going to analyze the process as such as well. First thing that you know is that it is semi-conservative. That means one strand out of the two complementary strand is going to form the another strand that would be the strand of new DNA. That means if supposedly you have to form two DNAs out of one DNA, I am going to present it. Supposedly you want two DNAs out of one DNA. So, do keep in mind that one strand would be used in this and the new one would be synthesized and the other strand would be used in the other DNA and the new would be synthesized complementary to the one which was previously present. Okay? If you can rewind this part and learn it by heart what I have said, listen to it time and again, time and again, you will get an idea what I am saying is that initially this is the DNA which is to undergo replication. It is having two strands. In the end, we are seeking four strands once the replication is completed. Out of the two newly formed DNA, one would be older and one would be newly synthesized. This was the crux of semi-conservative DNA replication. Now, we are going to see what all enzymes are involved in this and from that, we will understand what DNA replication is all about. Now, there are a few terms that you have to keep in mind before we start with it. First thing, very important in DNA replication was semi-conservative. Then is replication folk. The folk as in we use for eating food. So, it, there would be a replication folk that would be formed. Another thing that is a star point in DNA replication, that direction of replication. What this direction is, what is the entire scenario? I would ask you to revise the structure of DNA and then come to this topic. Direction of replication is always without any error always it is 5 dash to 3 dash okay you know the template strand and uh, not just the template strand don't confuse yourself you know the strands of dna have polarity one is 5 dash 3 dash other is 3 dash 5 dash and the direction of replication is always 5 dash to 3 dash because dna replication is a process where a new polynucleotide chain is to be synthesized so basically the process is of polymerization which involves deoxynucleotide phosphates. <coughs> the deoxynucleotide phosphates would perform two functions. One function is because it is something like ATP, it is going to provide the energy that is required for the process and secondly, it would act as a substrate. Now, what is this deoxynucleotide phosphate? These are nothing but that is ATP, GTP, all right, CTP and it could be triphosphate, it could be diphosphate, it could be monophosphate. All you have to get is, you are going to get 
monophosphates or diphosphates so that one phosphate is used in carrying the polynucleotide chain further because one phosphate is required nucleotides come over there which nucleotides deoxynucleotides they come over there and they get rid of one of their one or two of their phosphates when the phosphate bond breaks there is release of lot of energy that energy is utilized for replication and at the same time this ATP when it becomes AMP it could be used as a nucleotide simple nucleotide for maintaining the nucleotide chain and forming polynucleotide that is why we have deoxynucleotide phosphates which help in polymerization now how does this polymerization takes place this polymerization is guided by enzymes which all enzymes? Firstly, we have helicases. DNA structure is a double helix. So, it has something to do with the helix arrangement. Second is DNA polymerases. One, two and three. Okay. One, two and three. It has something to do with polymerization. Third one is ligases. You know what ligases are meant for? They are meant for joining. That means some fragments would be formed. So we get the enzymes. Firstly, something with the helix is to be done. That is coiled. Okay. Then secondly, polymerization is to be done. That we talked about. Deoxynucleotide triphosphates would come over there and provide with these two things. The substrate would help in elongation of the chain. And lastly, whatever chain is being formed, that could be formed in fragments. That is why we need ligases. Okay. Now, let us see the process because we didn't talk about replication fork till now we didn't talk about direction of replication till now now we are going to see the function of helicases first of all see before we start with replication we have a term known as ORI this ORI is a site where replication begins and it is known as origin of replication it is a specific sequence which is identified another uh, by another sequence known as rna primer from where the replication starts one point is to be remembered that in case of prokaryotes that is when the cell is going to have nucleoid bacterial cells the replication supposedly this is ori the replication would follow in both the directions one chain would increase, um, would be formed or polymerize in this direction, other would polymerize in this direction. But in the case of eukaryotes, when the genetic content is in a well defined nucleus over the chromosomes, then there are many sites of ORI, alright, over the DNA, there would be this ORI, this ORI and in this direction, the replication would follow all right so we have origin of replication many origin of replications or otherwise known as ori in the case of eukaryotes they are many as compared to the prokaryotes where in both the direction the replication begins we are going to deal with replication in eukaryotes now we have a helix we have identified the origin of replication supposedly this is the DNA helix. Now, I can't present it in three dimensional form because of the limitation. I don't have that uh, three dimensional presentation as we have in again, I would say science fiction movies. This is a two dimensional representation. So, imagine this helix being coiled like this. First of all, the coiling has to be opened, okay, because once the origin of replication has been identified, supposedly it is here, this coiling has to be opened so that it is easy for the um, enzymes to come and work. For that purpose, we have helicases. 
Apart from helicases, there are special binding proteins as well, which once the helicase has been, the helix has been opened with the help of helicases, whatever single strands are available. Now, how the helix would be opened? Certainly, the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs have to be broken down. There are bonds over here, right? Supposedly, see, these bonds have to be broken down. So, these bonds would be broken down with the help of helicases and those single strands which are now exposed, they are not bind to anything, they would be taken care by special binding proteins. The single strand that is exposed now as a result of breaking of bonds with the help of helicases which enables the opening of helix, they would be exposed and that would be taken care by special single cell, single binding proteins. Okay. Now, <clears throat> What happens next is, once this has been exposed, as you must have seen, if you are opening up a wire supposedly or a rope, if you keep on extending it that has been coiled, there is a tension that is created at the other end of the coil. Alright, you are getting my point. How can I tell you this? Like, uh, if you have this thing coiled like this, supposedly you have some coiled something and you start opening it from one end. What happens is that it does open from one end, but the tension goes further at the other end. So, in order to uh, take care of that tension, we have a special class of enzymes known as topoisomerases, which take care of the tension that is created as a result of opening of this helix. Now, you can make it out. Supposedly, I am opening it like this. It is going to create a tension over here. It is going to get more congested. While I open it more, it is opening like this and the tension would be created here. So, in order to take care of the tension that is being created in the helix further, it is taken care by topoisomerases. Now, what happens to what has been exposed? This exposed part <coughs> that is the single strands that have been created, those which have been created as a result of helicase activity. Again, I come back to here this point. We have a replication fork that is being created, this opened part. Now, what happens is, you know that replication's direction is 5 dash, 3 dash always. That means this would go like this. The newly formed strand would follow this direction. Never would it be possible that in the same way it will come this way. No. Why? Because supposedly this is 5 dash, 3 dash. This strand has to be 3 dash, 5 dash as we know the law of complementarity. Opposite to this, this would be 3 dash, 5 dash. Now, the direction instead of being like this, it could be like this. Right? We have to take care of complementarity, that is must, okay. We cannot form the new strand which is not anti-parallel, okay. Complementarity is to be taken care and it has to be anti-parallel, otherwise it will not be complementary. Suppose if the same direction occurs, then what would happen? One strand is having base pairs A, T, G, C like this. If it is not complementary, then it will have its strands like this and in this case, there is no probability or possibility that you are going to get a chemical bond formation and how can you get a double helix structure, right? So, <clears throat> this has to be taken care of. Now, why is this direction so much specific that it always has to be 5 dash, 3 dash? Because this polymerization or this extension of the strand is carried out by DNA polymerase 3. Now, this DNA polymerase 3 is an enzyme, again it has a lot of tantrums, it is highly specific that whatever polymerization would take place, every time the deoxynucleotide phosphate would come and join at the 3 dash end, then only polymerization is possible. So, it polymerizes in this direction only, that is why we always have DNA replication taking place in direction 5 is to 3. So, DNA polymerase just extends the 
replication that means it extends the polynucleotide chain it is responsible for polymerization but how does it occur over here we have a specific sequence that is known as ORI origin of replication at origin of replication who comes there comes primer what is a primer primer is a small RNA sequence very small RNA sequence which identifies origin of replication it comes and identifies origin of replication there is an enzyme involved known as primase it helps in identifying the origin of replication by the RNA primer and from there on DNA polymerase keeps on bringing one by one the complementary deoxynucleotide phosphate it combines a, a phosphate bond is formed that is phosphodiester bond is formed and the polynucleotide chain extends in the presence of DNA polymerase 3 okay this is for the strand where the polarity is 3 dash 5 dash because it would be complementary 5 dash 3 dash would go on now supposedly see over here this this line is the line representation of single strand of DNA supposedly we have a over here I'm going to write it like this a next is T next is T G C T what would happen is primer has identified that this is origin of replication DNA polymerase would bring a complementary it would bring thymidine Deox deoxythymine thymidine phosphate over here and for form double bonds with T. Now the next would be adenosine phosphate it would come and double bond with this and there would be a formation of deoxy um, sorry phosphodiester bond then next would be again it would bring A it would form the bonds then it would bring C then it would form the bonds and in this way as you can see the chain is extending forward and a complementary strand is being formed which would be complementary to this and certainly we are getting one strand of DNA which is being formed this direction is certainly in accord with the direction that DNA polymerase follows. So we have a new strand, the new one that is being synthesized completely complementary to the previous one and in the same manner this opposite strand but here the direction has to be opposite. Now what happens in this side is there is formation of small fragments known as Okazaki fragments. These Okazaki fragments the name is given in honor of the Japanese scientist who had discovered these Okazaki fragments same way but opposite direction. Now what is the need of doing it this way instead of going further and further as I told you in the beginning that the coiling causes tension in the helix. So if we keep on increasing it this way, this way, this way it is going to increase very much tension so it is better we keep on doing it like this that in an opposite direction also there is replication taking place but it is taking place in small fragments. So this strand where the fragments are not being formed but instead a continuous synthesis is taking place of the new strand that strand is known as leading strand. So the leading strand has the polarity of 3 dash to 5 dash while where Okazaki fragments are formed that is known as lagging strand. Lagging strand has the polarity 5 dash 3 dash. So it would be synthesizing its complementary strand in opposite direction. Now we had talked about leading strand, we had talked about lagging strand, we talked about Okazaki fragment. Where does ligase come and work? Certainly there are fragments which are being formed, they have to be joined. Okay, now they will be joined by ligase. Okay, now we have talked about ligase as well, it will come and join the fragments. But what about the two DNA polymerases that we didn't discuss about? All right, DNA polymerase 3 is doing the polymerization. What about 1 and 2? So the 1 and 2 are going to come over here, replace the RNA primers. 
certainly because the replication is taking place in small strands it would have started with rna primers only so it is going to replace the rna primers who dna polymerase 1 and 2 they are going to replace the rna primers bring dna polymerase 3 over there and cause formation of dna complementary strand and then they would be joined using ligases apart from this function where they replace the primers and bring dna over there the polymerase 1 and 2 also have another function that is of proofreading. Now, what is this proofreading? We had talked that mutation is the main source of evolution. Mutations are lethal as well, mutations are dangerous as well. So, supposedly there is some mistake that occurs. We cannot afford mistakes being done. You must have seen, I when I am teaching you, I do so many normal glitches, I am mistakenly speaking something or DNA cannot afford that. Because if such mistakes are occurring at DNA's level, you can very well imagine what implications it would have on an individual. So, in order to avoid such mistakes, there is a foolproof editing mechanism that is known as proofreading. Supposedly, some wrong nucleotide comes and gets fixed over at some place. So, who is going to take care that wrong, that whatever, whatever error has occurred is to be taken care of and it is replaced with the right one? That process is known as proofreading and it is taken care by DNA polymerase 1 and 2. So, with this, we come to the end of DNA replication. A quick revision and recap that this entire process involves the formation of new strand from the previously existing strands so that two exact copies are being formed. I need not to emphasize much on complementarity. Very clearly, you can make it out that whatever would be originally present that is only being formed originally here we would have a t t a t a same thing is being formed but on a previous one semi conservative first of all the helix has to be unwound using helicases whatever tension is being created by that unwinding is taken care of by topoisomerases then an rna primer comes and identifies the origin of replication site over there it starts the extension using dna polymerase 3 the extension occurs in such a way that the polymerase brings along with it a deoxy nucleotide phosphate that helps in attaching over here and it provides the substrate at, at the same time being a phosphate it gives it gives the energy that is required for the process the chain extends or the this strand keeps on extending according to the complementarity okay the extension is always in 5 dash 3 dash direction it can never be in the opposite direction because the enzyme does not support it and on the complementary strand the opposite strand this replication takes place in opposite direction that means one is in this direction the other one will be in opposite direction why it is done at specific site so that the tension is not created in the middle also at times i am being asked by a few of my students and you might also think it that why it does not come in this direction instead of going like this it should start from it should have an origin of replication over here and it could start in the other direction that is not possible because again you can make it out if it starts from one end and the other end tension is going to become in the middle and which enzyme is going to take care of that tension i don't know it is possible for any enzyme to take care of such a huge tension that would be created in the DNA strand because of uncoiling from both the ends. So, in order to avoid that problematic system, it has a simple solution and the solution lies in Okazaki fragments that are formed on the lagging strand. When the Okazaki fragments are formed, they are small fragments, they have to be joined using ligases. Now, who enables the ligase to work so that the missing part is filled? That is done by DNA polymerase 1 and 2, which also take care in the proofreading process where whatever error has occurred, if possible, that is taken care of and very well the cell performs the enormous task of DNA 